Hello class, welcome to online session. Uh, I'm sorry I do not have the slide for slide 83. Uh, so we are going to have three slides for this session on uh, ovarian tumor as well as gestational trophoblastic disease. So we have slide 90. This is giant, uh, granulosa cell tumor followed by 184 that is choriocarcinoma of the uh, gestational trophoblastic disease and then we have slide 218 that is yolk sac tumor so this first slide is slide 90 which is the granulosa cell tumor uh, under this would fall under the germ cell tumor category for the WHO classification there are two types of or variants of the granulosa cell tumor uh, usually depends on the age of the patient so it's uh, either it's an adult or a juvenile and two-thirds of uh, of the giant cell tumor would occur in the postmenopausal women and 95 percent of granulosa cell tumors the cases would be adult type Okay, so when we look, when we get a granulosa cell tumor, uh, grossly it appears to be solid or it can have a cystic area. It can be predominantly solid, partially cystic or predominantly cystic, partially solid tumor and has a yellow cut surface. And then histologically, we would see the presence of this uh, nests of uh, round cells you look into the high power magnification you can see the presence of uh, this round cells that would be forming the nest and then we look into the individual cells and you can see that they have an open nucleus it means that they are vesicular and then it has prominent nuclear grooves at the center of the nucleus so they would have an appearance of a coffee bean uh, coffee bean appearance okay coffee bean shape and it also would show the presence of this follicle formation okay, which we would call as call x nerve bodies okay so it's very easy to identify the call x nerve body so again when you look at the nest you would see the presence of okay nests of the round polygonal cells and then when you look at the high power magnification you can see readily the presence of call x nerve bodies and the cells have round to oval nucleus uh, they have open uh, they have open chromatin pattern with the presence of nuclear grooves with uh with the presence of nuclear grooves showing a coffee bean appearance so called x nerve bodies okay so what would be the significance of of granulosa cell tumor although they look okay they look uh as if they are benign but these are potentially malignant tumors so obstetricians would treat them as low-grade malignant tumors and this uh, these cells the granulosa cells would elaborate inhibin okay and they would also elaborate estrogen that's why some of the patients who have granulosa cell tumor have the tendency to present with fibrocystic change of the breast uh, endometrial hyperplasia or even endometrial carcinoma and that's because of estrogen stimulation uh, there's another 
differentiating trait with regards to adult and the juvenile type of granulosa cell tumor and we base it on genetic mutation with the presence or absence of the FOXL2 gene. So if FOXL2 gene is mutated, then it's of the adult type and it is not usually seen in the juvenile type. Okay, so next slide would be slide 184. This is choriocarcinoma. So, um, choriocarcinoma is a malignant tumor of, uh, of the gestational trophoblastic disease, of the trophoblasts. And uh, when we have the choriocarcinoma, it can be seen occupying the endometrial canal as part of the gestational trophoblastic disease or it can be part of the germ cell tumor of the ovary okay it is also called the choriocarcinoma but the choriocarcinoma is most commonly encountered uh, in the endometrium so uh, clinical presentation of our patients is that they would exhibit uh, exhibit vaginal bleeding okay and these tumors would elaborate human chorionic gonadotropin okay so it would be increased um, in the urine and in the serum and how do we differentiate this one from the other gestational trophoblastic disease so the H mole or the high TD4 mole would present with chorio, a chorionic villi and trophoblast in the case of choriocarcinoma we do not see chorionic villi we only see uh, the trophoblast okay so let us look at the slide so you can see uh, areas of hemorrhage okay this would be areas of hemorrhage look at the high, higher power okay. you can see the presence of areas of hemorrhage necrosis okay. and then Later on, we would identify the presence of atypical cells. Okay. So there are two types of trophoblasts that are uh, present in this case. Uh, we have the cyto and the syncytio. Uh, if we remember histology, these are the two uh, cells that would line the chorionic villi and they are uh, the, the cytotrophoblast would be smaller than the syncytiotrophoblast so let's try to identify the different um, the different cells okay so when we have large cells like this one like this one this one this one these are syncytiotrophoblast. So they are identified by having large nuclei, okay, or you have binucleation or multinucleation, and then you have moderate to abundant cytoplasm. The smaller cells, okay, these are the cytotrophoblasts. Okay. Again, if you are going to look at other areas, Smaller cells are cytotrophoblast. Larger cells, multinucleation, syncytiotrophoblasts. So, absence of chorionic villi, okay, you would say that this is a choriocarcinoma. Okay. So next slide is slide two one eight. Okay, our last slide for this session. So this is called the yolk sac tumor. Uh, this is for the uh, ovary and uh, the yolk cell tumor is also called endodermal sinus tumor and uh, it would fall under the germ cell tumor okay for the WHO and uh, these cells would elaborate 
alpha fetoprotein. Uh, this particular tumor is the second most common malignant tumor of the germ cell origin after this germinoma. And what we have to look for here would be the presence of a blood vessel. So first of all, you have to look for a blood vessel. Okay. So you have a lot of cells there okay, in the background like this. So what you have to do is you have to look for a blood vessel. Here. So you see a blood vessel. I try to look at the high power magnification. So this is a blood vessel, the one in the center, that would be surrounded by tumor cells. This is what we call as the Schiller Duval body. Okay, Schiller Duval body. Let's try to look for another one. Okay, so it's adjacent. Here is another one. It's adjacent to it. There, you can see another blood vessel there so it's surrounded by tumor cells blood vessel tumor cell this is another one okay this is another one this is another Schiller dual body uh, let's try to look for another one Sorry, Chandra. Here's another one. Little bit small. Ah, too small. This one. This is a this is another blood vessel surrounded by tumor cells so this would be a Schiller Duval body last one here another one okay. so this is another one this is a Schiller Duval body blood vessel surrounded by tumor cells okay so I hope you would learn a lot from those three slides for dissension and can you stay safe guys and good night